Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is going to be a review of When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. And the reason that I wanted to make this video is because I feel like everybody is terrible at telling you what this book is about <laughs> and why you should read it. I put off reading it for a really long time because the description is kind of boring and really vague and every time people talked about this book they were like oh it's so great and then they would describe the world building elements and I'm like that's cool but mm, okay. So I am gonna try to explain who should read this and why and what this book actually is because like I said it has popped off on TikTok and it has been a bestseller. A lot of people really like it but I feel like most people are so bad at describing it so let's talk about it. When the Moon Hatched definitely falls into the romanticy category. It is a fantasy romance. The romance plays a significant role in the story, but it also has a lot of fantasy elements to it and there is a lot of world building to it as well. I think a lot of people get hung up on the fact that there is a glossary at the front of the book for world things. I don't think you need to read the glossary to start. You could reference it as you go if you want. If you're a seasoned fantasy reader you're just gonna pick up most of it as you go and I really don't think it's that big of a deal but people get a little intimidated by that and I just think it's unnecessary. There are actually a lot of things about this that remind me of Sarah J Mass's book Books, which maybe is why it's been so popular because I feel like it has a lot of similar qualities that are hard to find but I would say that it kind of ups the world building fantasy elements a bit and the quality of the writing is a little bit elevated a little more poetic so the style is different but I feel like the vibes are kind of similar. This book starts by following a young woman who is really brash, she's really sassy, and she is hard-headed and determined. The kind of character I really enjoy, a kind of character I think a lot of people enjoy, and she is doing things in the underworld of this society that get her into trouble. And she is supposed to be executed, but is saved from death by someone who for all intents and purposes should be her enemy but there's some chemistry there and there's really good banter. So I feel like if you like brash, sassy, badass female characters, you like a lot of banter and slow build sexual tension. There are some pretty steamy scenes in here later in the book and there's also an element of mystery that drives the plot forward. So if those are things that appeal to you, I would definitely recommend this. I was surprised at how accessible it was, at least as somebody who reads a lot of fantasy. Now if this is the first fantasy book that you're picking up, you know, it might be a little much, but if you are somebody who has read and enjoyed fantasy books in the past, I really don't think you need to be intimidated by this. And also, while yeah, some of the world building ideas are kind of cool, I don't think that's what makes the book. I don't think that's what makes the story. So the world building people talk about is like, oh, it's a world where it's like half daylight and half sunlight, which I'm like, okay, <laughs> know why that's the first thing that's like in the description. Why is that important? I don't think it really is that important to the story. It's fine. What is interesting is that they have these dragon moons that are like moons in the sky but also dragons. It's a fantasy world. It's not sci-fi so just kind of go with it. But there are some really interesting things involving these dragons who sometimes fall to earth. Hence when the moon hatched, right? There's a lot of action, there's a lot of intrigue, there's a lot of banter, there are mystery elements, there were some big plot reveals that happened in the last like two chapters of the book that make you want book two immediately. I really loved it and while I was listening to the audiobook to try to read most of it before I went to an event with the author, I could tell that there were bits and pieces that I was probably missing or things that I would want to go back and reread. This does seem like the kind of book that has a lot of rereadability if you are the kind of person who likes Easter eggs. At the book event I went to with the author, she talked about how she loves to go back through and drop in Easter eggs and hints at things to come in future books, and this is intended to be a trilogy. Personally, I love authors who do that. Some of my favorite authors give you hints where after 
after reading later books in the series you can go back and reread them and get more out of it and so the fact that she's doing that here is very exciting. I also think it would probably be really interesting even just to reread this after having read book one knowing what you know from the get-go and trying to figure out some of the mystery things that we don't know yet. I thought this was a blast. My one caveat to this is it was originally indie published before it got picked up for traditional publication and I would say that probably because of that it is a little longer than it maybe needs to be. There are places where I felt it dragged a bit. Not so much that it completely lost my interest, but I was like, okay, this probably could have been shaved down, and if it had been traditionally edited, it may have been. But future books in the series are being traditionally edited, so I don't really have a problem, and even as is, I really enjoyed it. So I gave this book four and a half stars. I do intend to continue on with the series. So far I'm really into it. I can see why people enjoy it so much, but I'm hoping that this is a review that will give you a better sense of what this book actually is and whether it would be for you. I do think if you like Sarah J Mass, you should probably give this book a go. You may really love it. So those are my thoughts on When the Moon Hatched. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts. And if you have read When the Moon Hatched, who would you recommend this to? I know this won't be everybody's cup of tea, but I feel like there is a large group of people who would really enjoy this book, and I was one of them. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.